when you make a composite airplane, you make these giant wing and fuselage parts, and they asked us for a better way to stick them together because mm -hmm. the joints were a place of failure. And what we discovered was instead of making a few big parts, if you make little loops of carbon fiber and you reversibly link them in joints and you do it in a special geometry that balances being under constrained and over constrained with just the right degrees of freedom, um, we set the world record for the highest modulus ultralight material just by, in effect, making carbon fiber Lego. Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so lightweight materials are crucial for energy efficiency. This let us make, make the, the lightest weight high modulus material. We then showed that with just, just a few part types, we can tune the material properties. And then you can create really wild robots that instead of having a tool the size of a jumbo jet to make a jumbo jet, you can make little robots that walk on these cellular structures to build the structures where they error correct their position on the structure and they navigate on the structure. And so using all of that, uh, with um, NASA, we made morphing airplanes. Um, a, a former student, Kenny Chung and uh, Ben Jeanette, made a morphing airplane the size of NASA Langley's biggest wind tunnel. Um, with Toyota, we've made super efficiency race cars. We're right now looking at projects with NASA to build these for things like space telescopes and space habitats, where the ribosome, who I mentioned a little while back, can make an elephant one molecule at a time. Mm -hmm. Ribosomes are slow. They run at about one molecule a second, but ribosomes make ribosomes. So you have thousands of them, uh, trillions of them, and that makes an elephant. In the same way, these little assembly robots I'm describing can make giant structures uh, at heart because uh, the robot can make the robot. So more recently, two of my students, Amira and Miana, had a nature communication paper showing how this robot can be made out of the parts it's making so the robots can make the robots, so you build up the capacity of robotic assembly. It can self-replicate. Can you linger on what that robot looks like? What is a robot that can walk along and do error correction? And what is a robot that can self-replicate uh, from the materials it is given? What does that look like? What are we talking so, about? So um, This is fascinating. Yeah. The answer is di different at different length scales. So, so to explain that, uh, in biology, primary structure is the code in the messenger RNA that says what the ribosome should build. Yeah. Um, secondary structure are geometrical motifs. They're things like helices or sheets. Mm -hmm. Tertiary structures are functional elements like electron donors or acceptors. Quaternary structure is things like um, molecular motors that are moving my mouth mm -hmm. or making the synapses work in my brain. So there's that hierarchy of primary secondary, tertiary, quaternary. Now, what's interesting is if you want to buy electronics today from a vendor, there are hundreds of thousands of types of resistors or capacitors or transistors, huge inventory. All of biology is just made from this inventory of 20 parts, the amino acids. Mm -hmm. And by composing them, you can create all of life. And so uh, as part of this digitization of materials, we're in effect trying to create something like amino acids for engineering, creating all of technology from 20 parts. I, um, I let's see, uh, uh, as another discussion, I helped start an office for science in Hollywood. And um, there was a fun thing for the movie, The Martian, where I did a program with Bill Nye and a few others on how to actually build a civilization on Mars that they described in a way that I like, as I was talking about how to go to Mars without luggage. <laughs> and yeah. the at heart, it's sort of how to create life in non-living materials. So if, if you think about this primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure, um, in my lab, we're doing that, but on different length scales for different purposes. So we're making micro robots out of like nano bricks and to make the robots to build large scale structures in space, the elements of the robots now are centimeters rather than um, micrometers. And so the assembly robots for the bigger structures are, uh, there are the cells that make up the structure, but then we have functional cells. And so cells that can process and actuate, each, each cell can like move one degree of freedom mm -hmm. or attach or dis detach or um, process. Now, those elements I just described, 
we can make out of the still smaller parts. So eventually there's a hierarchy of the little parts make little robots that make bigger parts of bigger robots that uh, up through that hierarchy. In, the, in but, that way you can move up the line scale. Right. Early on, I tried to go in a straight line from the bottom to the top, and that ended up being a bad idea. Instead, we're kind of doing all of these in parallel, and then they're growing together. And so to make the larger scale structures, we um, like there's a lot of a hype right now about 3D printing houses where you have a printer the size of the house. Um, we're right now working on using swarms of these, you know, uh, table scale robots that walk on the structures to place the parts um, much more efficiently. That's amazing. But you're saying you can't for now go from the very small to the very large. Th that'll come. Um, th that'll come in stages.